In this video, we're going to begin a lounge chair project so that we can explore constraints. So I'll open the lounge chair, which shows the completed model. So we're going to be making something similar to this in the next few videos. Our first task is to sketch the side view of the chair. So let's just take a look at this and make some mental notes about it. So it has a very dominant element that is diagonal. It runs from the lower left to the upper right. It also has a leg that comes off of that at an angle, and it has another similar element that goes up and forms the backrest. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard and let's start a new design. I'll tap on the cube, and let's start in the right view in the YZ plane, and then tap outside of that to close it. Maybe I'll actually change the units as well. I'll change this to centimeters. And what I'd like to do first is set up the grid so that it makes sense for the scale of a chair. I'll draw a line here, and I want that to be one meter long, just to get a sense of scale. I'll tap on that, click on that, and type 100 centimeters, enter. So this gives us a sense of how big the chair ought to be. So it should be the size of one grid square here, it looks like. I'm going to zoom in here, and that would be the space where we want to put the chair. So I'm going to delete that line. I'll also turn on Snap to Grid mode, and then I will begin by drawing my first line from the origin point over here to this location. Now I'll draw the front leg from this location up to the line. Observe that we have this purple symbol appear here that represents a connection along the edge. And if we want to see what that is a little bit more explicitly, we can turn on the snapping hint if that's not already on. I'll just undo. Now if I draw that, we should see a little hint that says edge. There we go. Another thing that's happening is this is snapping to the grid as well as the edge. So I'm going to go in here and turn off Snap to Grid. And now if I move this point, it will remain on the edge. If I move it too much, it's going to actually move that first line, and that's not what I want. So to keep this diagonal line fixed, I'll select it by tapping on it, and then I will click Lock over here in the menu on the left. That locks each endpoint of that line, so it can't move. Now if I come back here and tap on this endpoint, you can see that it has an edge constraint on it, and that's that little symbol with a red dash inside of it. Now when I try to transform this, I can no longer move the line, but I'm just sliding along the edge, and this is going to help me make some design decisions about the angle here. One thing I could do is make this perpendicular. So to apply a perpendicular constraint, you need to select both lines. And then over here, I can just tap on Perpendicular, and they're made to form a 90-degree angle. But that's not really what I want here, so I'm going to undo. Instead, I think what, I, what would look best is if I move this up so that we have something like that, where we have an oblique angle that is something that's more than 90 degrees on the front. So now I will draw in another line over here somewhere, representing the back of the chair and it's also going to snap to the edge. And I again, I'm not sure where it's going to go, so I'll just stop it there. I think what would make most sense here is if these two lines were parallel to one another. So I'll tap on the parallel constraint. You can never really tell which line is going to move. It's one or the other. In this case, it moved the line on the right, and you can see that down here. It moved that vertex off of the grid, and that's not really what I want. I don't want it to be below the ground, so I'm going to undo. And this time I'm going to select this line and then lock it, and then select the other line, and then apply the parallel constraint. That forces the line on the upper left to move. So at this point we have a very simple schematic diagram of the side view of the chair. We need to elaborate on that and make it a double line representation. I'll use the Offset tool right here, and the way that this tool works is you drag on the line perpendicular to its length, 
to offset on either side. I'm going to offset this something around that area. Let's say it's three and a half centimeters. So I'll tap on this value and I'll type 3.5. Enter. I'll do the same thing over here. This time I'll drag it to the left. 3.5. Enter. Now I'd like to create the diagonal line of the chair. And I don't want to offset the line here. I think it would be more interesting as, as if the wood of this piece was tapered. So what I'll do is just start a point right about here and drag this down. I don't want an arc, so I'm going to shake the pencil, in this case to go into line mode, and observe that I can actually snap along the y-axis as if it was an edge. I'll position that right about here and lift the pencil to complete that drawing. And then over here I'll drag a line opposite that over in this direction, and I can't snap that here where I want it because there's no edge and no axis, so I will just intentionally overshoot that by a little bit. And then I'm going to turn on guides and then draw a line across here using the guide to make sure that it's horizontal. That forms a boundary so a surface was generated. We don't need to worry about the surface right now. I'll go ahead and connect some of the dots by drawing lines across these open areas and that generates surfaces in cert certain areas. Now I need to clean things up, so I'll click Trim, and then tap on edges that I want to get rid of. And I'm going to zoom in here, in this intersection, because there's a tiny little segment here that I should get rid of right there. Also, there probably is one down here as well. I need to tap on that. Now I'll click Done. So this is the, the general structure that we want for the chair, but I don't want it to be so angular. I think it would look better is if we ease the transition between these pieces with an arc. And then I will select the arc and this piece, and then click Tangent. And then select the arc again, and select this piece, and make those tangent as well. So the arc was moved twice to maintain those two constraints that were just added. I'll zoom in a little closer there. Let's make another arc over here. Again, I'll select the arc and the adjacent piece and make them tangent. Do the same thing here and there. And now I'll use trim to trim any edges that are no longer needed. I may need to zoom in if we have a situation like this where there's a really tiny little piece that needs to go. I think I got out of plane by dragging my finger a little bit, so what I'll do is double tap on the plane to make it flat again. Then I'll tap on Done with my finger. We also should have a transition up here with another radius transition. So I'll draw in an arc, select it and the neighboring edge, make them tangent. Do the same thing here. We'll do something similar over here. If you wanted to, you could specify the radius value right here. I'd say that's two centimeters. And then I can connect these like I did before. and then we need to clean things up. A surface wasn't generated inside the arc on the left. Perhaps it doesn't quite meet over here. What I'll do is drag this vertex over. Undo. That's not doing it. What I'll do is lock this center location. I'll lock this as well. Then I can just focus on this one location. I'll drag that over there, and that generates the surface that we were missing. Now I'll go ahead and trim all the unnecessary pieces just to clean things up. And then done.
So we've used constraints to help us design the look of this structure. Now, there's one other thing I want to do, and that is to cut away this piece up here at the top. So what I'm going to do is draw in a line right here that goes across temporarily. I'll be erasing that in a moment. Now I'm going to draw a line down here, like that, and then I'll use trim to trim away any unneeded pieces. Constraints are a powerful feature that allows you to refine your designs in very precise ways. They allow you to apply specific dimensional or geometric conditions to the geometry that you're sketching. This type of feature set is available in AutoCAD, but it's not available in SketchUp, for example. So we're getting a high-end feature here in Shaper 3D.